Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is my good friend, Monica. We do uh, a lot of things together. We are line dancers, first of all, and, and I got her to join. She's Hakka, but she's from Indonesia. Uh, our Hakka uh, people have gone all over the world, and we want to share this with whoever is viewing us or will be viewing us. Um, this is our first cooking demonstration. We have others in line that will be doing it later on in the year. So, so, um, so uh, she mostly cooks Indonesian food, but it's Chinese with Indonesian flavor. And today, oh, you've done a lot of cooking, right? Oh uh, yeah, I'm a home cook. Usually I'm cooking for my family. So you learned to cook from your mother? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you're like me, uh, we try to get a recipe from our mothers, but the thing is they don't measure things. We have to, oh, how do I click this on? Oh, I've got it upside down. Okay, so uh, I used to ask my mother, I said, how do you make something? And then she would show it to me and then she would just throw this and that in, in, in the pot or in the, in the, uh, in the bowl. And, um, but she never me measures and she will say, oh yeah, one teaspoon or one tablespoon and whatever it would be too much of anything. So I kind of gave up and I, I do things using a recipe or nowadays you can go on on the internet and you can find right. a lot of things and compare. Yeah. Um, so without ado, we'll let Monica take over. Okay, thank you. Good morning, viewers. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate how to make the a snow pea stir fry with tofu and black fungus. This is a very easy dish. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what we need. So this is the snow pea. Uh, you can find it any Asian market. And then we need, uh, we have a firm tofu here that's already fried, the block tofu. Yes. And then we also need the black fungus. I think you can find this uh, at any Asian market. They have a variety of brands. So this is the brand that I choose. Uh, we also Let need- me have that black fungus. You know, we use a lot of the black fungus in uh, making jai. I love the black fungus. These are huge. These are really big ones, right. but you can get it in smaller sizes too. So we'll leave it on the side here. It, um, you go to a Chinese store, you can find this black fungus. It's dried, and but you have to soak it so that you can use it. And then sometimes you have to trim off some of the stems. Okay. All right. Next. So uh, this is the sauce that we're going to need. Uh, this is the oyster sauce. So you can choose any brand. This is the Likamki brand. And we also need the soy sauce. We need the hoisin sauce. And this is the sesame oil. We need the vegetable oils for frying and also the cornstarch okay. to make it thicker. Some of this is a, a staples of Chinese cooking. You really need to have in your pantry right. oyster or um, oyster sauce. You always have to have a bottle in, in your, uh, if, you, if you open it up, then you've got to put it in the refrigerator. And soy sauce too. There's different kinds of soy sauce that you can buy. Um, here, the popular brand is Kikoman or Aloha. Now, we found that Aloha shoyu has uh, less salt than the Kikoman. Kikoman has a little bit more salt. So, first, I'm going to show you uh, how to clean the snow pea. So, usually, they have a very hot fiber on the top. So, you have to clean it, peel off the hot fiber. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to chew and also the bottom one, okay? So it's like this. So, and then this is the one that already clean. So they don't have the black fiber anymore. So one of the things about Chinese cooking is the preparation. That's where all your work. That's is right. The preparation. Yes. And the black fungus, uh, because it's come dried, so you have to soak it first. So it needs about 10 to 15 minutes to soak it. So you pour the hot water and oh. then put the black fungus. Right. Hot water helps. It, it, it um, speeds up the process if you put warm or hot water. Right. This is what it looks like when it's already pliable. 
So then you cut it uh, like a strip over here like this. And this is also the cut tofu for this tofu that already cut it. You can use any kind of tofu if you don't have the fried one. Oh, okay. You can buy the block tofu. Uh, mm -hmm. So you, you can know, get it at the supermarket. Right. So either the medium or the firm, then, right. you, then you fry it. Right. Okay. So we also need three cloves of garlic. You just uh, mince it, you know. This is all the minced garlic that I already prepared. Uh, okay. That's if, it. if you don't want to mince it, you can always buy it at the store already minced. Yes. But it doesn't taste the same as the fresh garlic. Right, right. That's easy, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Convenient. Right. Okay, let's get started. I think uh, you can see this is the sauce that already makes from all these sauce that I mentioned about. So we need about two tablespoons of oyster sauce. We need one tablesp tablespoon of the hoisin sauce, one tablespoon of sesame oil, and also two tablespoons of the soy sauce. Uh, so this is all the one that already mixed. And to make it thicker, I also add about half tablespoon of the cornstarch. Okay. That's a staple in the Chinese kitchen. You gotta have cornstarch. Yes. So it's, when it's on sale, buy it. Okay, let's get started. Okay. So yeah. gonna... peas are really good. They're delicious in any meal. You, you can put it in any of your stir fry foods. Yeah. It's and it's very, very nutritious too. Now, there's some people that don't like vegetables, like my daughter. <laughs> it's like pulling teeth for people who don't eat vegetables. So, talk about vegetable. My, um, my granddaughter, when she went into high school, she decided she would be a vegetarian. It, it floored all of us. I mean, where did that come from? But she's a confirmed vegetarian. And her mother says, I'm not making two different dishes. You're going to cook for yourself, Monica. And her name is Monica, too. Oh, right. So small world. <laughs> Just a small world. So we need about two or three tablespoons of vegetable oil to heat it up. So we wait for a second until it heat up. Okay. Okay. Now, we use, uh, we use a, a thing that is a wok, uh, but it's with a handle. So nowadays, you know, you can buy a lot of things that are, are convenient for us to make Chinese food. There's also uh, the um, electric wok, which I once owned, right. which is gone. <laughs> my my daughter-in-law cleaned out our house mm -hmm. and everything's gone. I have only three dinner plates. <laughs> that <we can> use. <laughs> uh, that's, that's another joke. But yes, wok, it, you need a wok because it's rounded. And so it keeps your food inside the uh, the cooking uh, uh, pot, right. pan. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> oh. All right, I think it's a little bit heat up now. Yes. Okay. Let me put the chopped garlic first. Okay. We're gonna stir it fry for a few seconds until it's fragrant. You want to draw the flavor out of the um, the Go garlic. On. All right, and and the oil. Yes. So we we're, we use a lot of garlic in the um, Asian dishes. Yes. And then I'm gonna put the uh, black black fungus. fungus. Oh, black Ooh. fungus is delicious. I love black fungus. You can smell the fragrance already. And now we add the. the Do you want to turn the fire down a little? No, I guess this is a little bit too big. Yeah. 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 Wow. Oh, it's sizzle. Stir fry is always good to make because you just have to get your ingredients together and then you throw it in the wok. So we're going to cook it until the snow peas turn bright green. Because the tofu is already cooked, so we're going to add the tofu last. There's all kinds of tofu that you can buy at the supermarket now. Uh, yeah. My daughter works at Times Supermarket. We, we go to shop there a, a lot of times. And, you know, Asian uh, area. And you can buy all different kinds of tofu. You just have to know what you're going to make. And 
what kind of tofu you want. So there's a dried tofu that's like this. It makes it really convenient for us to make uh, our dishes. And then there, there's the other ones that are in the um, liquid. Uh, you have soft and firm, depending on what you're making. Mm, that smells good. Yeah, the smell is already coming out. So you stir it about maybe three minutes until it's bright green. I think it's almost there, Becky. Mm. Most Asian dishes have a lot of vegetables in it, so it's very healthy. I love this dish because it's very crunchy. The snow pea is very crunchy, very healthy for you. Okay, the last one we're gonna add the pot tofu. There we go. This is a very simple recipe. It is very simple. Okay. This is the last one. And you have to have the sauce. We're gonna add the sauce, already mix all the sauce. You know, a lot of recipes, they'll ask for like peanut oil, but I find that you can use regular vegetable oil for your recipes. It works, whatever works. You know, I recommend it for the uh, quarter cup of water or uh, chicken broth. But uh, uh, if you want to be a little bit, uh, you know, if this, if you think it is too thick, you can add additional water. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That, that's one thing about learning how to cook is if you cook it and the thing is the uh, uh, liquid evaporates, you can always add a little bit of water. Right. To liquefy it again. Yes, absolutely. So you learn that as you cook through the ages. <laughs> but you learn by your mistakes. That's true. We all learning, right? Every day, yeah. learning the, from experience. So I guess the plate is too small now. Anyway. But it looks good. Here you go. Here, so this is move. the final product. Here, put your things over here. Oh, display. Right. Yeah. Okay, we have somebody yeah, who's going to some test some things here. Thank you so much. So, Gary. <laughs> here you go. Here you go. Here's a little. No, that, oh, that has something. Great. In it. Have you seen <laughs> there, take some. So we have our own tester here. Yes. Gary, you want some? <laughs> mm, looks good. Looks so hot too. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Nice and crispy. Oh, thank you, Gary. Enjoy. <laughs> thank you. See you later. This is uh, more to eat. This is Stanton. <laughs> He's our hospitality chairman. Uh, uh, look, it took what 18 minutes for you to yes. fix this. It's very right. easy, quick and easy. Thank you very much for our viewing. We're going to show you the recipe right now. So anybody wants to take a look at the recipe here, here it is. Oh, it's going to it'll, be, on it'll be on the website, but I just I'll show it to everybody who wants to see it. Okay. We have more time, so uh, I like to present another dish. Um, you know, Chinese New Year's is always a big event for Chinese, and so we uh, have. I remember my mother making jai for us on New Year's Day. So we get up early in the morning, and she goes, "Hey, get up! You're gonna have the jai," and and we drag ourselves up and. And so um, I never made it. I, I don't watch her make it. I mean, she would get up early in the morning and she's making it. So when we get up for breakfast, it's all ready. So I took it upon myself to learn how to make jai. <laughs> I had to use a recipe for that. So I'm going to show you the ready-made dish. I made this early this morning. 
Now, jai is a, a, a vegetarian dish. So it's something that my granddaughter would love to have. But you put all kinds of ingredients in there. Someone told me that when, when you're making jai, you're supposed to have 18 different types of vegetables in there to make it auspicious. Yes. Um, the way, I, way we make it is I put the things that I like in it. My mother would put in other ingredients and there's some things that I really don't care for. Like, have you heard of uh, the jinkle beans or, or nuts? I, I didn't care for that. So I leave that out of my chai. It still comes out good. But let me show you some of the things that I put in there, some of the ingredients. Okay, I wasn't sure if I had enough time to show this. But really, really what is important for making good chai is you need this um, red, fermented red bean curd. <laughs> you need to go to a Chinese store to uh, buy this. If you don't put this in there, it's not going to taste the same. I found out from one of my friends, her daughter lives in Seattle, and uh, she made jai. And she told her mother, hey, it doesn't taste like jai. I wonder why. And... <laughs> She told her mother that she put oyster sauce in there. Well, there is oyster sauce in there, but you don't put a whole lot. You do have to have this item in there. Otherwise, it's not going to be your chai. Okay, so what do I put in there? Well, Monica talked about having the black fungus. This is a black fungus. It's dried. And what you need to do is take that out. This is a preparation, and you have to soak it. I'm going to soak it about 10 minutes until it's soft. Now, some of the um, black fungus that you buy need to be trimmed. So you have to look at the stem and see if there's a hard part on the stem and you need to cut it off. This is where your preparation takes, <laughs> takes a lot of time. We also use oyster sauce, like we mentioned. And um, this is an, a different brand of the um, red bean curd. Just go to a Chinese store and you ask them for red, fermented red bean curd. And of course, water chestnut. I've got some here in here, but you can buy a can and it's already sliced. It makes it convenient for us modern Chinese ladies to cook. So it's already sliced. But if you wanna buy fresh, you go to a, a Chinatown and, and it, you have to peel it, take all the black stuff off, and then you slice it. So that's extra work. Um, and um, so we also use black mushrooms. Come in a packet like this. Nowadays, you can go to any Chinese store and get the black, black mushroom. We also put in this... Um, but this this is called tin joke. This is a uh, this is supposed to be sweet. I don't really care for it, but I do put it in. And uh, it's a bean curd sheet. It comes in really. It's hard. They come in large sheets or smaller sheets, and then the recipe says break it into two two inch pieces. Well, I I then you have to soak it because it's of course dried. And I like to cut it in strips. It's easier to eat, but it's a, I think it's a necessary ingredient in there. Although I don't particularly care for it. <laughs> Our mother had a lot of that in there. Um, also, this is the um, dried lily bit buds. Really small little strips. But then you have to get the ends after you, after you soak it, and then you got to cut off the 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 end part. This is not good to eat because it's hard, you know. But it it adds to your to your chai. I've got some in here. See, so it comes out like this. 
And of course, um, then we also put in um, rice noodles. You can call it rice noodles or um, long rice, Chinese long rice. If you want to be authentic, Chinese long rice. But I would use any kind of long rice. Long rice is good. Comes in little packets. It's small little bunches that you can buy. Also, um, we put this. They call it fried black moss. It's like an angel hair kind of a thing. And I didn't put this in here, but it's a good thing to put in. That's another ingredient. And of course we use sugar. Sugar show you and things. You make a little sauce and then you put it all together and you cook it. Let me see, what do you do? Put oil in. I put garlic in my oil. I try to draw the flavor out of the garlic um, because most Chinese dishes you use garlic. It's it's adds to it and also it's good for your health too. Um, after after I make that, then you put this red bean curd in there, and you cook it for about forty five minutes. Um, covered, and then bring it to a boil first. Cook it for about forty five minutes and that covered. So you can walk away a little bit, but boil it, and then you got to turn the fire down low. So this was a, a real, um, simple, simple um, jai. They call it monk's food. And um, you also have to put the cabbage in it too. What do you call it? One bok? They sell it at the supermarket. You just pull the leaves off, clean the end off, and then chop it however you want it. I like it chopped small. Water chestnut is in here. Um, there was an um, item that uh, I went to the Chinese store buying some of the things. And this lady was in front of me and I said, what is that? And she says, oh, this is just like potato. I mean, I don't know what it was, but it was like potato. So I put some in here. Okay, so um, we're going to do a question and answer right now. So viewers, if you'd like to call in and ask a question, we'll be glad to answer them for you. Yes. Gail? Yeah, um, I have a question. Have a yeah, I have a question uh, on for both of you, but on the jai, my noodles always, always get mushy. What do you do to, how long do you cook it and what do you do to prevent it from doing that? Mm -hmm. What gets mushy? They all, they're all going to get mushy. The my fun. Yeah. Or the fun seed. It, it gets all it like, like uh, mushy looking. Oh, don't put it in too soon. Mm. How long uh, do you soak yours? Oh, about uh, six or 10 minutes. Okay. Maybe I'm soaking it too long. Right. Yes, yeah, so you can't soak it too long. It'll absorb too much of the liquid. And then oh, it'll yeah. get much. I guess I shouldn't do it overnight then. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, that's too long. Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe that's why. All right. And then also on, on the tofu, right? Yes. Do you make it spicy too? Um, well, if you like spicy, that's sure. You know, well, you, you can add some sambal. You, you do according oh, yeah. to your own taste. Now, I, I personally don't like spicy. So I keep it on the mild side. Okay. But if you how like spicy. Other, how, how about the other tofu dish? Do you add, uh, what kind of sauce do you use to make it spicy? Oh, usually you can put like, uh, we call it sambal. Uh, there is a Vietnamese uh, garlic sambal, they call it. So we don't have it here to show it to you. Okay. But if you want, you can add that like, you know, to your liking, uh, half a half teaspoon or one teaspoon, or it's up to you. Oh, okay. But so you can also add like other uh, ingredient, like the shrimp. You know, sometimes I put the shrimp over there too. What's that? Oh, okay. The shrimp. Oh, shrimp. Yeah. Shrimp. yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm going to ask you, what kind of shrimp? Dry shrimp or uh, or fresh shrimp or? Uh, me, usually I put a uh, uh, fresh shrimp, but okay. uh, my friend just uh, 
remember Barbara? Yes. Barbara told me that the Hakka people usually like to put the dry stream. Oh, so if, okay. Yeah. If you put the dry stream, then you have to soak it first yes. for a while, right. I think, in the hot water. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Right. And then after that, you chop it a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, oh, it okay. gives so much uh, nice yeah. flavor. Very, very yeah, it's very fragrant. Yes. We call it hamni. Yeah. Is that what you call yeah. hamni? Right. Um, okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. welcome. I'm a, you know, ABC, so I, I don't pronounce Chinese words too well. I have to use, ask my Chinese <laughs> friends. <laughs> That's okay. Um, do you have any other questions? Can I make okay, a so I wanted to say to Gail that when you go buy the long rice, there's different thicknesses of the long rice so that might make a difference on how mushy it gets okay i always look for this brand i think it's the wing brand in honolulu and it's a much firmer long rice and mm. i when i first started to cook ages ago i had that experience of getting mush when i put the long rice in then i found out well i wasn't supposed to put it in from the beginning and just cook it that i was supposed to just um, soak it with hot water i was told to use hot water to soak it for about 10 minutes and then put it in and it's okay. always worked since then oh, i'm gonna look for the brand then wing then. okay thank oh, you okay. if you look 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 at the different ones some of them are very thin you know very fine others yes. are thicker and, so. because they're all in chinese i can't tell which one is used for what or whether or not <laughs> just, just, just look for the just look at the the, the item itself and see. okay you'll notice the one's much thicker than the other in diameter is what i mean oh. all right thank you nancy thank i you, find Nancy's. that the, uh, with thank regards you, to um welcome. to long rice um you don't want to buy the regular long rice um that they find that they make for you know like uh, um, Hawaiian foods mm -hmm. that all swells up. Uh, if you use the Chinese long rice, it tends to be less mushy. Right. Yeah. And yeah, don't soak beyond ten minutes. Right. We're gonna wrap it up okay. now. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you, you very much, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.